Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. You know, over the last few days, a lot of people have contacted me in a tizzy because a federal court judge upheld Measure 114 in Oregon. And if you're not familiar with Measure 114 in Oregon, it is a new ballot measure that barely passed that requires people to obtain a permit, a special permit where you have to pass tests and stuff to be able to exercise your Second Amendment rights. You have to have a permit to buy a gun. It also limits magazine capacity. It's a mag limit law. And this judge, Karen Emmergut, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, but it's not a common last name. Uh, but she declared that this measure is constitutional in its entirety. There's nothing in it that's unconstitutional. She said this all fits with what the founders did. You know, it's historically uh, uh, precedented. You know, because, you know, how the founders used to say, every citizen, you know, their rights shall not be infringed unless, of course, they fail the test or they can't afford to take the training and they don't have the permit to exercise their rights. I'm pretty sure that's what they said back in the days of the founders, right? No, not at all. So that's ridiculous. And I also don't remember when the founders ever said that your magazine can only have 10 rounds or said anything about capacity. You know, there were guns that held far more rounds and fired far faster than what the standard rifles were and standard handguns were. They didn't regulate those at all. But lately, the left and the judges that follow their BS doctrine, you know, they've been schooled on what to say in their rulings. They say, this fits the precedent of the U.S. Uh, restricting the use of highly or unusually dangerous items. You know, unusually dangerous. Uh, even though 15-round magazines are super common, they're in common use. There's nothing unusual about them. But... Oh, they're unusually dangerous. And they always use that whole thing like, well, we've always restricted extremely dangerous weapons. And when you ask them, okay, when was that? When have we been doing that? They don't have an answer for you, really. They'll say something about trap guns. You know, they used to regulate how you could use trap guns. Well, trap guns are landmines, basically, not guns. You're not there using them. There's something you set up and anybody that strays into them gets kablooied. Uh, and there's already laws today that you can't do stuff like that. I can't rig a shotgun on my front gate that if someone trespasses by coming in my gate, it goes off and shoots them. Can't do that. That'd be totally illegal. Uh, so that is precedented. But they in no way restrict, restricted the items. They just restricted the use in some unsafe ways. You could have all the parts for a trap gun. In fact, often a trap gun was just a regular gun that someone had set up to a tripwire. And you can't do that. So their argument is ridiculous on its face. And if you read the argument from this judge, it's ridiculous on its face. It's absurd. She actually said in her argument that, oh, the, the uh, counsel for the defense never proved that 15 round mags are common. But the state, the state's special witness proved that they're not. But there's no way that could even be possible. But it's politics. And I want to remind people something. This is what we told you was going to happen. Stop panicking. I know a lot of channels are like, oh my God, oh, you should panic. You should run around like your hair's on fire. And you should watch my videos because I'm the one that tells you when to panic. You know, so they, because they want views and money and sponsorship, etc. And bad news sells. But there's no real bad news here. Uh, this is stuff that's to be expected. I told all of you from the beginning, as does anyone who has any knowledge of how the courts work, especially on a uh, local level, that in these anti-freedom state, anti-2A states, you're probably not going to win on the local level. You're going to have to get out to the circuit before you win. And uh, I've been reading some analysis of this judge's ruling about this, and almost every judge that read it said this will definitely be overturned by the circuit because it's absurd nonsense. All of her reasoning was ridiculous. Well, your, your plaintiff didn't prove to me that something that's common is common. Like, they didn't bring enough stuff into court to prove the sky is blue. You know, that kind of bullshit. She was trying to find little technicalities to rule in favor of the political party of her state. And here's another thing. Like I said, even though she is a district judge, that's a federal judge, she still just works in Oregon. 
And she's very much involved in the politics of Oregon. I, bear, I guarantee you she goes to the same cocktail parties as the governors and the Democratic senators do. So keep that in mind. So she passed this ruling. But here's the thing. It doesn't change anything in Oregon right now. We're, uh, the Measure 114 is still on hold because there's a lawsuit in a county in Oregon that hasn't been settled yet. It's set for trial in September. So her judgment is just something that the state went and got so that they could have more ammunition on their side with the people. So it can look like, see, we're doing the right thing. Even this federal judge agrees. You know, that's basically in our pocket. You know, these types of things happen. And we told you to expect it. Like on Washington's side, they went out and found like some 92-year-old judge that would rule in their favor, a sympathetic judge. But then we knew that was going to happen because they're going to shop for judges locally. The attorney general is anti-gun, so he's going to do what he can to get it to make it look like he's right in the state. And then when it goes to the district or the circuit court, it will be overturned. Uh, and then I hope they appeal because I want it to go to the federal court. It's better to win in the district court anyway, or the circuit court anyway, than the district court. Because you win the district court, that's just for the state. Doesn't change anything in any other state that has the same rule. If you win in the uh, circuit court, it affects all the states in that circuit, which would affect California in this case. So winning on the circuit is better. And then if they appeal and go to the federal court, that's even better because then it affects the United States as a whole. But like I said, we expected it to go this way. You're going to find local uh, judges that are just basically part of the local elite political structure. And whatever that is, that's how they're going to go. You know, they're going to be, hey, they do me a favor, judge. Would you rule on this and make us look like we're right? Sure, I'll see you th Thursday at the cocktail party and we'll work it out. They're dishonest as hell. They're basically politicians. So, uh, and they're elitists. So uh, that happens. We expected it on these local levels because they play the game. They want to hang out with the attorney general. They want to hang out with the governor. They want to hang out with the mayors. They want to do all that stuff. So they play the game of their state and their state politics. It's when you get out of your state, that's when you start having judges that care more about their reputation. Like, hey, every judgment I make, the Supreme Court slaps down. They don't want that because they would someday like to be on the Supreme Court. So uh, that's how it's going. That's how we expected it to go. And like I said, her judgment doesn't even put the measure into effect. The lawsuit in, uh, I think it's Harney County, has to be, go through first. And if that judge, if it found down there that the rules are unconstitutional, her ruling means nothing. Like I said, that was just political theater. Right now, like I said, it's going as we, pl as we thought it would. Nothing special, like I said, and even though it says U.S. District Judge, she still just works inside Oregon, plays Oregon politics. It's not like this was a circuit court judge or, you know, a Supreme Court judge or anything like that. She's not even a Supreme Court judge inside the state of, uh, 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 of Washington or Oregon. That's even a different beast. Not much better, but different. So don't panic. This was expected. This is how we thought it was going to go. This is not a major loss. This will be appealed even. And it'll go to the circuit. And the circuit will most likely overturn this if any of the judges I've been reading from who are left-leaning and right-leaning judges, if they're right, and this is crazy talk, it'll get overturned. Like I said, these local judges play the game. Now, every now and then you find a local judge that has a conscience and goes, hey, I would love to rule in favor of this, but Bruin tied my hands. Or, I don't like this law either. And Bruin has made it clear I was right. You know, one of those things. You can find that. But usually inside the state, they play the state game. So we're not uh, worried about this. This is not a big deal. This is nothing to run around with your, head on, with your hair on fire about, no matter what some channels want to tell you. Remember, those channels are motivated by one thing, and that's not supporting the Second Amendment. It's about making money off of people who are mad and angry. So for them to do that, you gotta get mad and angry. So they gotta try to make you that way. So stop paying attention to those people. Pay attention to the actual legal scholars, the people that are fighting the fight, the people that know how these things usually go. Because right now, like I said, it's right on track. Things are going exactly the way we thought they would. Once they get out of the state, 
that's when things will really start rolling and hopefully it'll get all the way to the Supreme Court so we can end these fights once and for all. Now that Bruin is the law of the land, these things have almost zero chance of winning once they get to the Supreme Court. So like I said, don't worry, we're still winning. It just takes a little time. Thank you.